um, would be best just because um, that's where I'm having trouble is just like, I understand how to do the problem. The problem is just like um, figuring out how to do the entire thing correctly, I guess. So we're talking about doing seven first? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. I'm gonna have to handwrite this one. For some reason they didn't upload uh, as quickly as I thought they would. So I normally snip snip them in here, but let me uh, let me go ahead and uh, jump off camera here. I want the limit as X approaches zero. So you got this table. All right, it's from both sides. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a little slower when I do it this way. And we're gonna go for about twenty. We're gonna go to about ten twenty five. For the okay. try it out lesson and then i'll talk to you about how to schedule other lessons things like that uh, at the end so um if you're ready we can uh we can get started yep all right so you are seeing my screen and the uh, first problem here the, the, there the way this course starts is is sometimes uh they're they're it's kind of numerical you're you're going to you're basically putting these x values in for x Right. So you're putting putting that in. Um, now, are you allowed to? Use, I mean, you've got to be able to use a calculator. Are you using a TI eighty three? Are you allowed to use anything um, for this? I think what it's the TI thirty six X. Okay. So is that the one that's required for like tests and quizzes? Yeah. Like um, yeah. We're not allowed to have a graphing calculator, so it's just like one of the basic. Okay. Ones. Got it. Okay. So just just uh, sometimes I like to show different things here to to make this. Uh, make this easier so there's a tool that i really like um that's most scientific i know you're not maybe for homework purposes so if we type in the equation in question here like that okay and we provide an x value so let me let me actually do it this way we provide an x value like we say x equals minus 0.1 we're getting we have this result down here so that okay. that's what they're looking for in the table. They're, they're literally saying put that number in for X. Okay. And then they're saying to do it again for point uh, zero one minus point zero one. So I am I am copying these down. How many decimal places to go to? It depends on what they what they ask for. Okay. Zero zero one. So point point five zero zero. And then uh, you're trying to figure it out at zero, but notice if you put zero in, it's it's going to be undefined, okay? But you're you're able to sort of figure this out. Um, but we got to go the other direction now. Put it in point zero zero one, and get get the result for that. So point four nine nine. Um, we go point zero one, point four nine nine again, point four nine eight. Depends on how you want it. What we're doing here, point and then point one. Okay, so you have to be comfortable doing this in the calculator. Now, I'm going to go back to the other screen and uh, talk you through what, like what you're supposed to see. So you're supposed to be able to recognize that there's a pattern here that like the numbers from both sides, they're approaching the same value. What does it look like they're approaching? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5, that's your answer. Yeah, questions on that? So, like, if I was not allowed to use that website, how would I do that in just, like, a... Ah, good analytical... question. Okay. Okay, so let me pull up my TI-83, which which I assume has some of the same. So here, here's what I think you're asking. I think you're asking me how to, like, enter this into the calculator. Yeah. Is, is that right? Okay. So first thing is you have to remember is that there's really what's called implied parentheses in the numerator and denominator, but there's nothing in the denominator. So the, the way that you would enter this in the calculator is parentheses, square root, that comes with the parentheses, minus 0.1 plus 1, close parentheses. So that, that ends this part. Minus 1, close parentheses, that ends the numerator, slash minus 0.1. So you want to give that a try? Please. Yeah. And you said it's a, 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 a 36 XX? Yeah, TI 36X Pro. Okay. 
I have another one um, that I might be able to use, but it's just dependent on if our teacher requires lockdown. He hasn't specified yet. So I'm waiting to okay. hear back. If not, I'll probably use that one because it is a graphing calculator. It's a lot better. Um, yeah. So I'm so it'd be good to know for me to help you because I can I can sort of help you navigate how to use the the calculators for yeah for this okay um, so go ahead and enter this in make sure you get 0. 0.513 when you do that I just get syntax error okay that's not good. <laughs> I think me... what I figured out yesterday, though, is I don't think that my calculator, let me grab my other calculator real quick. Yeah, it'd be good to, it'd be good to get a calculator that, that you know, will work, that you're comfortable with. Um, let me pull up. Uh... Let me go. Okay, I grabbed it. Let me. So, so I'll show you. The, 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 this is the TI eighty three, but it it should be the same as the thirty six X. Although I don't know, maybe the thirty six X has a little better capabilities. Um, that's the you know, I mean, that's the one of the that's one of the main um, one of the only problems with this online format is me trying to figure out. How to help you with your calculator um but you can see this does work the way it was written yeah and, uh, so it, it, you just want to get some practice with that i think that'd be right the right yeah uh, i think the yeah. problem that i figured out yesterday is the calculator doesn't like when i put like a negative sign um in the front. oh yeah yeah so that's okay. a common one you have to make sure you use the you have to use the negative not the subtract or that's yeah exactly yeah okay now when it says syntax error and it, you can go to it. I think it's go to. It will try to tell you where it thinks it's a problem. Okay. So don't just hit quit. Go hit go to, and it'll kind of maybe hint at what could be the issue. Okay. All right. So nine nine is exactly the same um, as as uh, seven, just different numbers. Here, I'm going to snip that in here. Um, one of the things about nine, though, is you're going to learn that it's a it's a known value um, through. Um, through this. So first thing though, is you have to make sure your calculator is in radian mode. All right? Okay. And, and so if we, if we, are we, are we still sharing? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not on the wrong screen. So occasionally I get to where I'm, I'm not on the right screen. So you gotta make sure your calculator is in radian and you have to do, you have to do the calculation for each of these sine of minus 0 0.1 over minus 0.1. Sine of minus 0 0.01 over minus 0 0.01. All right, hopefully you're seeing the pattern here. Yeah. And then you got to do it again for the, the ones on the right here. Can it doesn't say how many places to round to, but um, do you want me to show you how to do this in the calculator or do you want uh, to try it yourself? Uh, well, uh, I just want to try it myself real quick. Okay. Sine. So then you would get negative 0 0.998 for the first one or you got, you got a different is your is your calculator in radian? Yeah, I just switched it. There it is. I got I'm sorry. Yeah, that's actually I, I messed up too. I <laughs> I said to, to do it. It's early. It's my first lesson of the day. Or just okay. positive. <laughs> yeah, positive 0.998. And then uh and then the next one here. Uh, you're gonna, I mean, you, you should you should round, but I'm gonna it, it, for the purposes of kind of seeing what it approaches, I'm gonna hold off on doing that. Okay. Um, all right, and then you do it again from the other side. All 
And then you kind of, they, they always typically ask this question where you, you have to sort of make that, that jump. You have to say, okay, well, like, what is it approaching? And this is where you get, it depends if, if you're comfortable with, you know, decimals, what do they, what do they go to in terms of fractions or whole numbers? But, um, what do you kind of see this approaching at zero? One. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, uh, more there is a more general way to do this, but I guess you guys haven't gotten there in the course, so we'll hold off on uh, discussing that. Until then. Okay. Um, you said number eleven. Is that yeah. right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm happy to go through whatever you want in this lesson. If you have homework, quizzes. You know, whatever it, it you're paying for the time i'm happy to help there's nothing wrong with me showing you how to work through problems um, so uh one of the things you're gonna you, you so the first thing you do when you're trying to find a limit like this the very first thing you always try is just put the number in like that's your go-to okay so you just try you just say okay one minus two over one squared plus one minus six and maybe maybe it works like maybe it gives you a, a result So like the numerator, the numerator is negative one, the denominator is negative four, this is one fourth. Is that, is that clear? Yeah. Okay. And am I, am I filling in the gaps on some of these things or do you have to, you know, if, you, if, if I'm not, please, you know, just ask me some Yeah, questions. honestly, I didn't know that you could do all of this on a calculator. So I was doing it like by hand yesterday because our, our, our teacher had us do it like by hand, but I didn't realize that you could put it in a calculator. So this is just like. <laughs> well, I mean, that's one of the, that's one of the benefits of the tutoring is like you find out immediately, you know, okay, here's the, here's the right way to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, uh, things are so much easier now. Yeah. Same thing here. So the first thing you try. Put that number in negative four plus four. Okay. Now zero on the top is okay. Zero on the top is okay. Right. Zero on the bottom is not, but let's not jump to conclusions quite yet. Okay. So the bottom becomes 16 minus 36 plus 20, which is zero. You have what's called zero over zero. This is called indeterminate form, which you'll learn about later in the course. But what you care about right now is, is you cannot divide by zero. Okay. You cannot divide by zero. So you, even though you try it, Sometimes it doesn't work. So after you try it, the next thing you do is, is some algebra. And typically that is factoring. Okay, so bottom factors. The bottom factors into x plus 4, x plus 5. So this is the limit as x approaches negative 4, x plus 4 on top, x plus 4 on the bottom, x plus 5 on the bottom. When these cancel, what remains on the top? One. Yes, good answer. Okay. So this is really, and you're supposed to, if you're doing this in, on a paper test, you're supposed to keep writing this limit stuff on the left each time. So you almost want to work the problem vertically, even though it's a lot of writing and a hassle. Okay. So after you, after you do your algebra factoring, and there's other things you could do here, you go back to number one and you just try the number again. Like that's always your like go back to. All right, we'll just try the number again. This time it works. Okay. Yeah. Any questions on that? No. Yeah. All right. So number 13 here. I want you to try one and tell me what 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 happens when you try one for this problem. It just, I get undefined. Yeah, you get zero over zero, but the issue is is the bottom one, okay? Yeah. So you try it, it doesn't work. Division by zero, you can't do. That's the problem. So now you got a factor. Now this one is a more challenging factoring. I would, I would consider that most students might not remember how to do this. The top one is difference of squares. Maybe, maybe you do remember it. So the top one becomes x squared minus one, 
x squared plus one. Okay, yeah. Is that familiar to you? Yeah. The bottom one is the difference of cubes. I guess we can make a little cube. There was a recently a Rubik's cube uh, world record set. I don't know if you saw that on social, but uh, yeah, okay. nuts guy went crazy. It took three seconds, finished it. Um, that one's a formula. I mean, and I like you're supposed to know this, but it's kind of an extreme formula. But this is where you know you you probably won't get this on the test. But it's like I don't know if you, when you took your SAT, you probably learned some stuff or your, your, your formulas. You got to try to decide: Do I need to remember this? And I'm happy okay. to give it to you here. It's it's in this form though, x cubed, I'm sorry, x squared cubed minus one cubed. So it becomes x squared minus one, uh, x to the fourth plus two, I'm sorry, plus x squared, one x squared plus one. Okay, so there's a there's a formula for a cubed minus b cubed. I'm happy to get uh, let's and let's fill that in here. That that becomes let me do that down here. Sorry, I should be giving you more of this stuff. So a cubed, or do I even do this? A cubed minus b cubed is a minus b a squared plus a b plus b squared. A cubed plus b cubed is a plus b a squared minus a b plus b squared. These are, I don't know if you need to know these for the test. They're, they're kind of the extreme ones for fact for, but you can check with your instructor. So okay. now things cancel here again, they cancel. Okay. So once you've canceled or done something, you then try the number again. Maybe it works, you hope it works. So now, and, and again, you're supposed to write this limit stuff every single time, it does get kind of, Kind of frustrating, but that's the game. <laughs> All right. And so you try this here, it becomes one squared plus one over one to the fourth plus one squared plus one, which equals two over uh, three. Okay. Yeah. Now I know you're not allowed to use a graphing calculator, but you could graph this original one to confirm your result. And I can show you that if you'd like, or if you just say, hey, you know, hey, I'm never going to be allowed to do that. Yeah, I'm probably not going to be allowed to do that. All right. So there's your answer. I'll let you know if that changes because it, it could change. This class is so much easier when you can graph everything. Right. It really, visually, you get to start seeing things and all that stuff. All right. So um, what, uh, where do we go from here? 20? Uh, or should we, I, I mean, I, I mean, just, just, you know, we're probably not gonna get through that many more problems. Do you want us to look at a problem like 21, which is a graph? What, uh, where would you like us to go next? Um, can we go through 27? Yeah. All right, so 27 here, they're giving you the graph. That's nice. Um, so not every limit is is defined, okay? So as as X approaches zero here, the problem is like, and, and, and sometimes you almost need to make that table again. So like if, it, if it's 0.1, okay, and, and, you, and you, you evaluate this thing at 0.1, well, what's gonna happen? Well. It's one over 0.1, which is 10. And when the cosine of 10, I don't know what that is, but we're going to we're going to see that we know that cosine itself sits there and oscillates forever. Right. So depending on where you are on the graph, you could be up here, you could be down here. We, you 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 have no way to know. All right. So so let me let me try to display tell you that or go through this graph. So when you when you when your x value is 0.1. Uh, I get I get minus 0.839. Okay. Now when it's 0 0.01, we're getting closer to zero. Okay, this time, this time it's positive 0.862. Okay. And that's that's the whole point over here is that the cosine of a number it bounces back and forth, positive and negatives. And that's what that's what the graph is attempting to show you here is that as you get closer to zero, it starts bouncing back and forth, back and forth. So this is this has this is this is un, undefined. Okay. Or does not exist. 
So if, if you have the ability, could you click on details there and just see what kind of language it uses? Because you want to be consistent with what your instructor wants. Yeah, let me just pull it up real quick. And that was which problem? 20 what? 27. 27. Um, it's I think a, it's probably going to go D and E, is my guess. An image shows a graph that consists of an oscillating curve plotted on an XY coordinate plane. The curve starts from the left of the second quadrant, approximately passing through point negative 1, um, comma, point 0.5, and exists, exists the right of the that's supposed to be exits, but it says exists. Exits the right of the first quadrant, approximately passing through the point 1.5. Between its start and end, the curve oscillates along the x-axis with an amplitude of 1 with increasing steepness as it approaches the origin and then decreases steepness as it approaches its exit. There, there's no answer, I guess. Um, I mean, the, there's the an answer. The answer is the limit does not exist. The there it is. Yeah, that, that's what I was looking for. So they, they use DNE. Okay. So not every limit exists. All right. Um, so I'd like to really quickly go through 25, if you would allow me to do that. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot here that we're not really getting into. We're just kind of like jumping around. But for a limit to exist at a number, like we talked about, you just you just put the number in. Okay. Two minus two is zero. Two minus two is zero. That's bad. They give you the graph to help. Now, for a limit to exist, here's what has to be true. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left has to equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. Okay, so this, this, ne this negative here means from the left. So from the left is, is going that way. That's from the left. Right. This plus here means from the right. You're literally traveling from the right. And so what we're, what we're trying to decide is, are these Y values the same? Are the outputs the same? And they are not. The limit from the left ends up being negative one. The limit from the right ends up being positive one. These are not the same. Right. So the limit does not exist. Oh, so they have to be like on the same plane like on the x-axis to yeah. be the same. Okay. So here, here's another possibility. The limit here exists because they okay. both approach the same thing. Right. Okay. The better case is when it's nice and smooth. Okay. But it doesn't have to exist. And that's one of the things that's really challenging for new students to calculus is like the limit is a destination. You just don't have to ever, you don't, there doesn't have to be anything there. You just have to be approaching the same thing. Okay. But if they approach different things, well, there's nothing there, All right? And and the problem in the case of this this one here, what's happening is we can't see it, but it's it's basically as you get closer to zero, it's just bouncing back and forth, back and forth, over and over again, and you can't tell. So if you get it right. like that, when you see a problem like that where it's just like bouncing back and forth, and we can't see where it meets, are we just to assume that it doesn't exist? This is the main one you're going to get. Okay. Um, sign if you do like sine x uh okay and and so these are sine x is the same thing um sine of one over x you would get the same behavior like these are all problems you would want to investigate okay in this course and and i know it's a lot of work but that is that is what's necessary okay all right so um unfortunately we're gonna have to stop right here i know 